trade with trade with confidence CLV trader to webinar today. Today I will run through with you in depth on how you can fully maximize the CLV trader to trading platform in your CLV trading with us. So before that, uh, for those of you who have uh, not downloaded CLV Trader 2 and not sure where you can get the this uh, copy of the CLV Trader 2, I can show you how you can get it. Okay, by the way, just uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, I'm one of the CFD dealer in Philips, with Philips CFD. My name is Shanti. Okay, today um, I will be the speaker for this webinar. Okay, without further ado, let me show you how you can actually uh, obtain uh, this uh, installation copy for the CFD Trader 2. First of all, I'll need you to go to our web website, www.philipscfd.com. Okay. After which, you go to trading platforms. Okay. And on the right hand side, top right hand side, there is this uh, box. Okay, that that say how to get Philips CFD Trader. Click on it, and there is this button here that say download CFD Trader to here. So there there will be a pop up that show. Uh, whether do you want to run or save this copy of the installation file, you just run on your computer. Okay, and once you finish the installation, you will see an uh, icon something like this. Something like this. You just double click to launch the file. Okay, log in using your Poems account and also your password. So it's the same set of password that you use to log into your mobile uh, poems online. Okay, so once you log in, you, you should be able to see the screen like me. Okay. Yeah, let me just show you. I have not created a shortcut, so I'm, I'm trying to find a shortcut here. But for those of you who already have a shortcut, you can just launch your Flip CFD Trader 2 first and uh, log in using your account number and password.
So has everyone logged into the CFD Trader or get ready with the installation file? So if you are ready, ready, so you can log on together with me. Okay, so I will just log on using my account. That's the screen show how that's how the screen should look like. Okay. Let's wait for a little while. The the file will actually load. The the program will actually start its application. Okay, so for my version of the CFD Trader 2, by default, if all of you were logged in, okay, you would have seen uh, a very default workspace, okay, a basic workspace like this. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to show you how you can create your own customized workspace uh, from, the, from this very basic workspace, okay. Okay, so now let's say for example, if I want to create my customized workspace, I want to add in a order ticket for myself, I can do so. Okay, I can just go to trading, order ticket, and click on CFD. So the order ticket will appear. So let's say if I want to actually place a DMA order ticket and a CFD order ticket side by side, I can do so. Okay, so this would be my watch list. Okay, and this will be my contract explorer. Later, I will, sh I, will, I will show you how you can create your own customized watch list for those of you who have not uh, created one for yourself. Okay, so let's say after I rearrange everything, I'm happy with the arrangement, or probably I want to add in one more windows, account management. Okay, so probably account management, I want to put it here. This is my watch list, this is my account management, and this will be my order ticket. Okay, so assuming I'm happy with this arrangement, okay, what I can do, what you can do to save this particular setting, okay, even after you log out of your CLD Trader tool and you re-log in again next time, it will actually show you the same window like this. Okay, what you can do, you go to File, okay, then you go to Save As, okay. So you can actually rename your workspace to any name, okay, you can say that my favorite. Okay, so once you're happy with the name, you just click OK. Okay, and this particular workspace uh, will actually be saved under my favorite. Okay. Okay, so this is how you can create a workspace. Next, we will go to creating our own watch list. Okay, let me just show you uh, the, the watch list that you saved just now, the, sorry, the workspace that you saved just now. What will happen after you log down and re-log in again? Okay, when you re-log in again, it should exactly look the same as how you last leave it. And of course, for the workspace, you can also create multiple workspace. It can it need not be just a one workspace. It can be a, a lot of variety, a variety. You can do it whichever way you want. And you can save that workspace any uh, for three or four workspace. 
any any anything you want. Okay, let's say if I load my own workspace again, my favorite, it should give me the setting that I last left. Okay, sure. Okay, this is about my uh, the the workspace on how you can save it. Okay, the next I will go to creating a watch list. Okay, how you can actually launch this watch list editor? You simply just go to trading. Okay, probably I'm a little bit too fast. I will just repeat trading. You go to watch list editor. Okay, this particular watch list editor windows will actually appear. And same thing what you do with your workspace. For your own watch list, you can also create your own name, okay, and your own uh, counters to put inside the watch list. Okay, so let's say for example, for the name of my watch list, I would like to actually uh, put it as um, my favorite. Singapore. Okay, so this particular watch list will actually uh, house all my counters that in my watch list. So under quick search over here, okay, I can do a search on the counter I have in mind. Say for example, so probably I'll create a new one. I rename it to New Favorite Singapore. Okay, under quick search field over here, I search for Olam, and then I insert it to the next next column. Okay, same thing I can do for other counters. Noble. I can do for many, many other small counters. Wilma, for example. Okay. Once I'm happy with this, I can just click on apply and okay. Okay, what will happen is that I've just created a watch list, okay, that contain Olam, Noble and Wilma. Okay. Okay, just a moment because I received a feedback that my voice is not very clear. Is it better now? Okay, hopefully it's better. Huh? Okay, now I'm, I will actually go back to the watch list huh, that I've just created. Okay, how do I get back to that? Go to trading. Okay, you go to price, CFD price, and then you look for the watch list that you just name it New Favorite Singapore. Okay, and under this watch list, that I created just now, I have housed them, housed in three counters, Olam, Noble, and Wilma. Indeed, they are inside. Okay, so this will be my new watch list. And this is my favorite watch list for Singapore counters. And as time goes by, you can actually uh, keep adding counters into your watch list, okay, as you pick more uh, counters in mind. Say if uh, you start to look at Golden Agri, okay, you can just go to this particular contract explorer, okay, to actually do a quick search to add counter to your this watch list. Okay, I type golden, and you actually return me the search. Okay, what I need to do is just drag this particular counters to inside the watch list, and as you can see, golden agree has been successfully added under my new favorite Singapore watch list. Okay. I will just do a right click on Golden Agri. I will just save watch list. Okay. Just to make sure that uh, whatever I have added from the Contract Explorer will actually go into my new favorite Singapore watch list. Okay. So some of you may ask me, how do I get to the Contract Explorer? If you do not see Contract Explorer, no worry, okay, I'll just close and re reopen it for you again. Contract Explorer, actually you can find it over here, under trading, okay, you go down all the way to Contract Explorer, okay, this particular Contract Explorer windows will basically house in all the counters, all the CLD counters that we have, okay, say for example, uh, you can actually do a quick search by uh, by category. Say for example, if you want to stream it down to uh, alphabet, you can also do so. 
So whatever that is being uh, refined here, will, they will actually just show you counters that actually start with A. Okay, you can also do like H or E up to you. Okay, but for the best practices for me, for myself, usually I'll just I'll just click all. Okay, okay? all meaning that you will include all the markets: uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, U.S. and include all the indices as well. But of course, if you say that oh, I don't trade, I don't really trade in uh, foreign markets. Okay, I only want to concentrate on Singapore markets. Okay, by all means, you can also refine your search by markets. Okay, so you go down to market, uh, there's a drop down, you just choose the respective markets that you are interested in. So let's say in this in this case for example, I'll, uh, if I select the market in Singapore, I will just see all the counters that is available under Singapore markets. Okay, and again if I do a quick search, let's say for example, I want to add in first resource, Okay, I'll just say first, and then uh, first resource will come out. I'll just drag and drop again to this particular watch list that I've already created. Okay, so that's how you can add accounters or search for accounters to be added to your watch list very fast or very quickly. Okay, well, okay, so that is for Contract Explorer. And of course, you can also uh, search for other, for this particular watch list, it's not only you can house the Singapore counters, you can practically add in any counters from any markets. Okay, so let's say if I want to add in Apple, okay, I do a quick search under Contract Explorer, Apple, so I just drag and drop to my watch list here again. So same thing, you will actually add in the US counters, okay. And uh, same thing with the indices. You know, let's say I want to add in a Wall Street index. Okay, I'll just search Wall Street. I'll just track here, and then it will appear. Okay, just remember what I said. Uh, just do a right click on the counters that you've just added. Just save watch list, so that you make sure that uh, the counters you've added will be saved the next time when you launch this particular watch list. Okay, so next. Um, that's how we actually set up a new watch list. And of course, this is not the only watch list that you can have. You can also create multiple watch lists. Okay, you can always go back to trading watch list editor. Okay, and you can create a new one and rename it a new watch list. New indices watch list. Say for example. Okay, so we'll just rename it. So same thing, it will actually create another new watch list for you. So you can you can have 10, you can have uh, 20 watch lists if you want. Okay, so for, for that I will not be opening up because there will be too many windows. Okay, but I just want to share with you that it is possible to have multiple watch lists. So you are not limited to only this particular watch list. Okay. Um, well, the next thing I want to share Okay, so here are some of the features uh, there. What, how you can uh, actually access from this watch list. Okay, so say for example, if I'm interested in uh, Novo, okay, I want to know more about the features uh, on what this particular platform can offer me. Say I'm interested in Novo. So I right click on Novo. Okay, I want to look at the charts. So just right click, select charting. So the chart will actually appear on a separate windows. Okay, so in the case that if you think it's too small, you can actually maximize to the full screen. Okay, and uh, depending on the horizon, you can actually uh, change it over here to a day, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Okay, so uh, let's say for example, if you are looking at daily chart, you can just change it to this daily. Okay, and let's say if you are looking at, uh, you are a day trader, you will want to look at a uh, minute chart, you can actually fine-tune it to 1 minute, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, 2 hours, 4 hours. Okay, so say for example if I look at the daily chart since the day has ended, okay, so this is what I, uh, the charting software will provide you. So here's are the other tools that you can use to draw or uh, to do your analysis, okay. So you can just draw anything you want. 
say for example. Okay, so here are the tools that you can use. Oops. And also indicators. Okay, so if let's say you are you looked you are looking to add some indicators on this particular chart. Okay, you can go to an icon here. There will be a drop down. Okay. So let's say if I'm looking at the volume for this particular counters, okay, it will actually show you a load up the volume, okay, daily volume. And say for example, yeah, if I'm actually interested to look at the RSI, okay, I can also add in the RSI relative strength index over here. So we just show you, okay, uh, this particular stock is actually already above the neutrality, so uh, uh, almost approaching the overbought region, okay? Okay, so let's say if you are not happy with RSI, you want more, okay? Of course you can, you can just add whatever you want here. So you can add Bollinger Band, it's up to you. You can add Stochastic, okay? So whichever indicators that you are familiar, you are familiar and you are, you have, you used to use it, okay? So you can actually just apply it on a CFD Trader 2 chart, okay? Say for example, if you after you loaded that particular indicators, you think that you do not want it anymore, you can just click on the cross here, and then you will just delete away the indicators. Okay. Same thing with the this drawing tools. You can just select it and just place it in anywhere around the screen. If you don't want it anymore, just click delete, and it will be deleted away. Okay. So, uh, okay, there's also a few options for you, okay, some people don't look at candlesticks, some people do, of course, and uh, some people prefer this OHLC chart, okay, what we call the open high low close bar, bar chart, okay, so if you are more convenient to uh, analyze chart using uh, these uh, the particular pat patterns, you can actually just change it over here. Okay, there are actually a few options for you to change or how you want the chart to be present, presented. All right, and our line chart is also available. Okay, so let me change it back to candlestick because it's a more common uh, patterns chart patterns that uh, people analyze nowadays. Okay. Okay, for the period wise, I can actually uh, view this counter all the way back to maximum of 10 years, okay? So from uh, 2014 to 2004. So this uh, particular counters, I can actually analyze for the past 10 years. But if you think 10 years is too long, you can always fine tune it to five years, okay? And you think you want it to be sh even shorter, you can make it three years or one year, up to you, okay? So this is more like uh, undo or redo of all the indicators that you have added just now. So let's say I just click on uh, uh, whatever that you have added, you want to redo, you can do it here. Okay, this is not very important, so I think it's fine. Okay, so say for example, if you want to change the chart from Noble to some something else, say a video, you can just load it from here as well. Okay, so you just select from the select contract, okay. So uh, you can quickly change the chart from these uh, particular windows here, what we call the select contract. Okay, so if I look at Asia, A Asia Medic, so I can quickly change to this particular counter, Asia Medic. And I can do the same analysis. Okay. So let's say I want to go back to Noble. Okay, uh, just now I've added some indicators. Huh? Volume, RSI. Okay, say if I'm happy with these uh, uh, indicators, only volume and RSI. Okay, and I want to save this up into my template. Okay, so what I can do is I go to template. Save template, okay. Sorry, template save as okay. So you just name my analysis. Okay. 
Okay. So I can just save this into a template. So whenever I actually load this template, you can you can always show me that these two indicators, and these two indicators will always be there. Okay. Well, this is more on our charting features. Okay, from here, uh, we can actually set an alert as well. Okay, from the charting tools, we can actually set alert. Let's say, for example, after you analyze the chart, okay, you decide that. Uh, okay, I think my uh, if I have I a certain support and resistance, you think that uh, at certain price, you'll be good if it can alert you to enter the position. Okay, so for some of you, you didn't catch. Okay, so just do a right click, new alert. Okay, the new alert windows will come up. Okay, let's say for example, if I'm looking at, uh, I'm going to search. Okay, so I'm going to search for uh, same thing, logo. Okay, so let's say if a uh, last down price is greater than uh, maybe let's say 135, okay, so I wish to be alerted, okay. So you can actually click on active and re-trigger, okay, delivery mode, uh, save it straight to an email. So you can just click your email address here, okay, blah, 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 at hotmail.com. Okay, when this condition are met, let's say for example, when during a trading day, uh, Noble actually go above 135, it will actually send an alert to your emails so that you will know. Okay? So besides add, uh, adding alerts from there, let's say if you are not from the charting uh, windows, you can also add alerts to trading. Alerts. Okay? When you open the windows, you'll be able to see the, the, the alerts that I just said earlier. Okay? So if you hit the condition, the alerts will actually uh, you, when I, I will be actually be notified by email, or even if I am inside the Civic Trader too, there's a pop-up window that will show me that my the price of Noble at one three five has reached. Okay, beside price alert, there's also another alert, so what we call order alerts. Okay, so what does the order alerts do? Okay, order alerts tell me. Okay, so when uh, let's say my working orders has been become done, partially done, rejected, withdrawn, or triggered, it will actually email me and notify me. Okay? So let's say if you only want to specify that, I only want to be alerted when uh, my order is done and rejected. Okay? So you can just tick accordingly. So same thing, type your email address, and then just send it to my email. So apply, okay. So this is how I can set alerts, okay, to help to help in my trades. Okay. Well, the next one I would like to share will be the order tickets, which is the most important thing. Huh? Okay. Okay. Before that. Okay. Before that. Okay. Come back to our watch list again. Okay. There are more features that you can actually access. Okay. By right click to the particular counters. Okay. Uh, there is one fantastic features over here that I would like to share with you. Okay, you right click, you go to Writer's Fundamental Data. Okay, so uh, imagine there are so many counters. Huh? We are, we are, we will, we will not be familiar with all the counters uh, that is available in the market. So, at point in times, we want to know more about the counters. We want to study them, uh, not in terms of, uh, not not in in terms of TA only, but also in terms of FA. So what we can do here, the, this particular trading platform actually offer a fundamental data, okay? And this particular data are quite reliable as they are actually uh, got it from a Reuters, okay? We actually subscribe to a Reuters, so this particular data are actually quite reliable. Uh, okay, say for example, you can actually just toggle around this tab, okay? Let me just uh, introduce uh, one by one. Uh, company information basically will just tell you the overview of these particular counters, like uh, what's the high low, okay, uh, what is the particular industry or sector that is doing. So it's a quick overview uh, for this particular company, what are they doing, okay. Okay, business summary, of course, they will tell you what does Noble Group actually engage in, okay, uh, global supply chain, blah, 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 okay. Um, and also uh, some of the ratios, okay some ratios and data that you can, if you're interested, you can actually look at it. And also, who are the directors and shareholders? And what is the analyst estimate for this particular counter currently? Say, for example, what is the consensus for all the analysts in the market currently? So, say, for example, well, one month ago, 
currently it is actually rated as outperformed compared to one week ago, one month ago, and two months ago, where analysts will actually hold a whole consensus on this particular counter. Okay. Financial statement. If you are a very avid person, you want to drill down further into these uh, counters, uh, balance sheets, cash flow statement, and income sheets, income statement. Uh, you can always look at the information here. The information are all available. Okay, as of uh, financial year 2030. Okay, so, so you want to look at the cash flow statement. You can also view until the financial year 2030. Calculate yourself using the, this, this particular statement. You can just look at here. They will have a summary here for you to actually do your analysis. Okay, so just to repeat, just right click Reuters fundamental data that you can get, get to that place. Well, okay, so this uh, I will move on, okay, to the order tickets. Okay, say for example from this particular watch list, you want to actually launch your order ticket, what you can do You can just quickly do a right, uh, just do double click, okay? Then the order ticket will launch, okay? If you want to have more than one order ticket, you can actually just double click on another counters, and there is a shortcut to get into our order ticket. Okay, when you trade CFD, it's very important uh, for you to to know that we have two types of CFD, okay? Especially in Singapore market, we have share CFD and we have DMA. So when you are actually initiating a trade, it's very important that you know what is the type of uh, CFD that you are dealing with now. Okay, so for example, if your intention is to actually do a DMA trades, okay, you have to remember that to change this particular drop down to DMA, okay, because you are not doing a share CFD trades, okay. After that, after you ensure, the first thing first, change it to DMA, and then uh, Look at the counter name, first resource. Say, for example, we are looking to short first resource. Okay, so what I can do is uh, very simple. If I, I say that I want to sell this particular counter at 260, so meaning that I will need to actually uh, set a sell limit order. Okay, so quantity, let's say if I'm looking at 10 lots, I can just change the quantity here. Okay, just uh, the minimum per for transaction for this is 1,000 share. Lah. Okay, so if I'm happy with this, I just double check again. Start from the top, is a DMA trade, okay. Is the right contract, is the right direction, okay, is a uh, limit order. Okay, quantity, double check again, limit price at 260, I want to show. So I just submit this order. So there will be a preview windows for you to view your orders. Okay, so if you double check again, triple check, you think that it's right, you just go ahead and submit this order. Okay, and the order receipt will appear with a summary of what you have keyed in earlier. Okay, how can you check your orders after you've already submitted? you who do not have the order status window yet, you can go to account, order status, to launch the order status window. Okay, I will just maximize this. Okay, look at this. Uh, I've just submitted a first resource trade to sell. It's under DMA, okay, at 260. So it will appear here. There are a few different tabs over here. So I just uh, uh, roughly go through with you uh, what does this tab represent here. Okay, all orders meaning that this particular will actually house all the orders that okay has been received, has been done, withdrawn by you. So it can be any order status. So all the orders that we submitted will be will appear here. That's that's all under all, all orders. For working orders, meaning that those orders that have not been processed, meaning that those orders that are still working. Okay, so uh, it's still waiting for the price to be hit and then the order will be done. So these are all working. So in the case, let's say for example, in my case, just now I submitted a first resource trade, okay. Uh, after I submitted, um, 
maybe a few hours ago, a few hours later, I, I find that, okay, I decided not to short the first resource. Okay, because I don't think it's the right time to short. So, I go to working orders tab, just check on this particular check box, okay, and I click on the withdraw button. After you've done so, it will be indication that tells you that DMA leave it withdrawal. Okay, since because it's a, uh, the market has closed, so that's why it returned me a penny withdrawal status, so it is okay. But for your case, let's say for example, after you submit an order, and you So, uh, your order status that that should be drawn status in has been reject. So those have been deemed as process. And trade style will only filter all the trades that has been done for that particular day. Okay, this is uh, order status. Okay, you can uh, actually need a uh, much wider. So if you want to get more information, you can actually scroll to the from the left to the right. Okay, to see more information. Okay, for CFD Trader Two, we have uh, in total uh, we have six uh, order types. Okay, so I will just briefly share with you as well uh, what are the different order types uh, you can use using CFD Trader Two. Okay. Just now, the one I showed you is actually a limit order, very simple limit order, meaning that let's say if I'm looking to sell at, a, at higher than the current market price, okay, then I will use a sell limit order. Okay? Let's say if I want to buy to queue lower than the current bid and ask price, then I will use a buy limit order. Okay? So say for example, I'm looking to enter into a position, uh, maybe 10 lots of EBS, okay, one lot at uh, maybe $17, oh, maybe, okay, now I want to buy lower, so I have to key 16 IT. So by keying this particular order, it means that uh, I'm only willing to queue to buy lower than the current market price. So that's why I use a limit order. Submit. Okay, there could be another situation where you want to enter when uh, that particular counter actually reach a certain support and certain resistance. Okay, so in that case, we will use a DME stop limit. Okay, how do we use it? Say for example, if I already long DBS, I already have uh, this particular position, long 10 lots of DBS at $17, okay? And now after I have, uh, I have this position, uh, I've got no time to monitor, okay? So I'm looking to actually set a cut loss level, okay? Using this stop limit order, okay? So I actually define what will be my stop loss level. Okay, what the other type that I can use is called stop limit. Okay, so now I need to determine what will be my uh, stop price. So say for example, I only can tolerate 20 cent loss, okay, from this trade. So my stop price is actually 16.80. So I keep 16.80 over here. Okay, my limit price, it can be 16.80 or lower. Okay, but usually I will just put a one or two bits uh, uh, away from the stop price. Okay, you might, you, you might be asking, what's the difference between this stop price and limit price? Okay, stop price is actually just a triggering price. Meaning that when, what is the price that will trigger this particular cut loss level? Okay, so in a, in a way that 1680 is actually the triggering point. So when price of DBS at go down to 1680 okay then we will send in the limit price to sorry, this should be sell huh? okay. to sell at 1678 
Okay, if you base on my example here, I already have existing long tenant loss of DBS 17. So in order to protect my loss, okay, in the case that uh, DBS actually go down, I will actually key in this particular order. To sell DBS, you have to do a sell because you are currently holding to a long position already. Okay, so you have to do a sell. 10 lots, okay, so it should be the same quantity against your outstanding position. 10 lots, my stop price, my triggering price, cut loss price is 16.80 and the price after this 16.80 is triggered, we will send in the limit price at 16.78, okay. So when the price indeed go down 16.80, uh, 16.78, the order will be done. And then we will cut loss at 16.80, 16.78 or better price. So that's how it works. There's also another way you can actually use this uh, DME stock limit. Okay. Uh, let's say if you are looking at certain target target price to enter. Okay. Let's say if you want to short DBS, if only DBS actually break above $17. Okay, so you can actually use this particular DMA stop limit. So not only you can use it to cut loss, but you also can use it to actually uh, look to enter a new position at a particular target point, target price point. Okay, so say for example, now it's 1695, 1696. Okay, so assuming that uh, I do not have any position, okay, I just now I have to, uh, assuming that the stop limit have cut loss for me. Okay, now I want to enter a new position. Uh, after a study, I, I think that once the price breaks seventeen dollar, there's a chance that it will it will actually go up further. Okay, so I want to do a buy stop limit. Okay, say for example, if actually hit seventeen dollar, okay, it will actually trigger me to send in my limit order to buy at seventeen to two. Okay. So this scenario is uh, how you can use a stop limit order to actually enter a new position at a new target price point. Okay. So if I'm happy with this, I will submit the orders. Call submit. Okay. This order will be submitted. Okay. Subsequently, what happens if let's say DBS tomorrow opening DBS actually go up to $17. Okay, this will actually trigger my stock price and I will send in my limit price to buy at $17.02 or a better price. That's how we mean. If you were to if you were to compare with a limit order, okay, you will not be able to keep a limit order to buy at $17 at this particular point in time. Because remember, a buy limit order is only for you to buy lower than the current market price. But if you are looking for a breakout, let's say a breakout above a resistance or breakout, of a breakout on the support, okay, you actually have to use a stop limit order to actually enter the new position. So remember, two ways you can use stop limit order. First is to cut loss. Second is to enter a new position when you identify a certain breakout in resistance or support. Okay. Well, next, uh, move on to the next order type, okay. Uh, next order type will be a trading stop limit, okay. This is also a very fantastic feature, okay. Meaning how it works is that basically uh, this particular uh, order types uh, will help you to trail your profit, okay. So how do we key in using uh, this particular tra trading stop limit? So assuming I'm still interested in doing DBS, uh, so I check contract name DBS I want to buy, okay. So, um, okay. So, assuming that I have already have a position, same thing. I I I've long ten lots of DBS at seventeen dollar. Okay. Now I want to actually protect my profit. At the same time, if let's say if it continue to go up, the price of DBS continue to go up, you actually throw out my profit. However, let's say if it start to go down, my stock price will still remain. Okay. And it will, let's say if it hit my stop price, it will actually uh, get out of the, help me to get out of this position. Okay, let's see how it works. So assuming, just bear in mind that I already have a long position, 10 loss of DBS at $17, okay. 
So with this, uh, I just key in a cell DMA trading stop limit quantity. I have to select 10 lots, okay. Trading step, okay. So I will step like how many percentage from the current bid and ask. Okay, if you notice, uh, so this will be 10% uh, from here. 1695 and 1696. Okay, so they will actually auto calculate for you the indicator stock price here. Really spread is for you to indicate how many bits away. Okay, let's from this indicated stock price. Let's say if this stock price is triggered. Okay, in this case, I will just put uh, two bits slightly worse off. So uh, again, it will auto calculate for me 1677 over here. Okay, so you don't have to worry. Just select how many bits away. Okay. And the stock price trigger by default, it will be. You can actually select whether you want to, you want it to be based on last done or based on the bid price. But since this is a DMA orders, I'll prefer it to be on last done. Okay, so I select last done. So I can just submit this particular orders. Okay. So for example, if let's say a DBS actually go up to eighteen dollars, okay. My new stock price will always trail to the the new price, which is uh, seventeen ninety nine eighteen dollars. So it will actually define a new indicated stock price for me, okay, every time. So let's say if it after it go up to eighteen dollar and it stop to go up, it start to come down. My indicated stock price will actually stop at the new at the last level of in, of uh, one percent from the last bid and ask price. Okay, so when it hit my indicator stop price, this order will be triggered and it will help me get out of position. So in a way, this particular uh, order type help you to trail your profit up. Okay, and let's say if you're actually turning down already, it will actually help you to cut to cut your loss and take and trail on your profit. Okay. So assuming if I submit these orders, okay, so this is the order receipt or uh, order summary of what you have uh, uh, submitted earlier. Well, so that is a trading stop limit, okay. Uh, there are also another types of orders or what we call the if done orders, okay. If done orders, so it's a conditional uh, type of, uh, it's not conditional, so it's a, yeah, it's also conditional in a way. It will actually tag to a particular limit order. So meaning that, let's say, if this particular limit order is done, then I will send in my orders into the system. Okay, say for example, if I were to change to the other if done, uh, limit order number, let me just try to search here. 158267, so it's this particular order that I'm referring to, okay? One five eight two six seven. So if I choose this one, so meaning that one five eight two six seven is actually my DBS order to buy at sixteen ninety nine one lot. Okay. So what does I what what do I mean is that say for example if this particular order is done, then I will enter this I will key in this particular order into the system. If not, no order should be key in. Okay. This particular the order type is usually used because some of investors actually have limited capital. So they have to wait for one repetition, uh, they, they have to wait for the position to, the earlier position to get up first before they have enough cash balance or sometimes credit limit to initiate a new position. So uh, usually that's the purpose of uh, why investor or why traders actually use these order types. Okay. So assuming I've, I selected my condition, th this particular limit order, okay, and uh, if this condition is true, then I will uh, get in to buy, maybe other converse, the hub. At 414, one lot at 414. So I just submit. Okay. So you see, uh, this will be a conditional. Upon realization of these orders, then this order will be sent in. If not, it will still be a synthetic order. Okay. The next one is a DMA OCO. Okay. I particularly find that this particular order is uh, very important. 
okay especially if you already have a uh, existing position say for example if I use back the same example I already have a position in my portfolio okay long 10 lots of DBS at $17 again okay now because uh, after I enter the position I want to set my profit level and also I want to indicate my cut loss level okay for this particular trade so maybe I think that uh, I will be happy to take profit okay if the price actually go up to 1750 okay same thing uh, let's say um, of course I will want a higher risk and reward ratio uh. Uh, I will cut loss uh, let's say if actually drop 10 cents okay I will take profit when it actually go up to uh, 1750 I will cut loss at 1690 so that's your plan for but that's your trade, trade plan for this particular uh, position okay so what I can do is I can just uh, based on this um, in mind based on this scenario in mind okay so how I key into my order tickets huh? Okay, so now because I already long, so now I have to change it back to DBS. So make sure that you selected the right contract uh, to actually uh, net off the position. DBS now because it's already uh, I have a long, so I have to sell. Okay, OCO limit. Okay, this OCO limit basically is my profit taking level. Okay, this is where you can key in your profit price, uh, taking price. So in this case, I have to keep 10,000 because my outstanding quantity is 10,000, 10 lots, okay? And just now my trade plan say that uh, I will take profit, okay, if price go up to 7050, I'm happy. Okay? On the other hand, okay, this particular orders allow me to key in my profit and also my cut loss. So as indicated, the quantity, same quantity that I have in my portfolio for DBS, the stop price okay would be my cut loss level 1690 if let's say from 17 dollars you actually go down 10 cents to 1690 I want to cut away this position just cut loss okay so limit price uh, remember I usually have a practice to actually just uh, make it one or two bit worse off in case there will be a gap through situation okay so in this case I will just indicate a uh, 16 dba So sub price trigger, of course, you can choose from a bid price, ask price, or last down price up to you. Okay, so in this case, because the DMA trades, I would prefer to use last down as my benchmark. Uh, okay, so once I'm happy with this, okay, so I just submit. Oh, it's too far away. Okay, so probably I'll just... Incorrect size. Okay. Okay, just a moment now. Huh? Okay, because for DMA, we actually have this uh, queue restriction. Huh? So what happened is that the queue restriction for DMA is plus minus 20 bits, okay, from the last time price. Okay, so meaning that we can only queue up to 20 bits away. So we cannot queue something that is too far away. Lah. So basically, the system will restrict us from uh, keying something that is too far away. So I will just select to the maximum um, uh, bit size uh, that is allowable. Okay, so this will be fine. Okay, so once everything is good, uh, you will preview the particular this particular order. Okay, so uh, check the contract is right, the direction. Okay, there's a DMA OCO that I'm trying to do, and OCO limits. Remember, this is the profit taking level that we are looking at. Okay. And OCO stop is actually my cut loss level. 
Okay, so this particular, uh, these orders, I can key in my profit and my cut loss in one order ticket. Okay, so I still receive this message. Huh? Let me just key in now. Okay, so once I have actually lowered down my bid size, uh, uh, it's okay really. So the error is due to the queue restriction. Plus minus 20 bits away from last time price. Okay, so once I've successfully submitted, I will be able to see my order here. So what will, what would that mean is that let's say for example if DPS tomorrow open go up to 1714, my this order will be done and this order will be cancelled completely. Or otherwise, let's say for example tomorrow DBS open and DBS actually go down instead of going up. Okay, so this order will be triggered and we'll send limit price to actually cut loss at 68. And this, the profit limit order will be cancelled away automatically. So you don't have to actually cancel one or the other when particular, one, one particular condition was, set, was uh, fulfilled. Okay? So that is the, the beauty of uh, using OCO, okay? In a, when you want to actually, you really have a trade plan or what is your cut loss level and what is your this uh, profit taking level. Okay, next we will look at EMA contingency. Okay, so this is also another types of uh, order types. Okay, okay, this one. Okay, how you can use this particular order type is that very simply, this order type allow you to actually set a certain condition. Okay, say for example. If uh, I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to short Apple, okay, if Google. If the last time price of Google is actually less than maybe like 700, okay? So basically this is a condition that you can actually set, okay? If the particular price, if the particular counter price actually lower than certain price, then the condition was actually fulfilled and we will send in this particular order to sell Apple, one share of Apple at this particular price. So that's how it means. So this particular order will be dependent on this condition. If this condition fulfilled, this order will be sent in as a limit order. If not, then uh, this particular scenario order will not be triggered. Okay? So pretty much that's what it means. Well, um, let me see. Okay, now we almost covered okay all the these order tickets, uh, all the order types on how you can actually key in the order types uh, using uh, all the order types using different scenarios. Okay, now I want to share with you this uh, account management. Okay, it's very important as well. Uh, how you can actually manage your portfolio, how you can track your portfolio. Okay. So basically if you do not have this window open, okay, what you can do, you can go to account account management. Okay, this particular window will appear. On this particular account management window, what you will see, you will see your ledger balance. Okay, uh, whatever amount that you put inside your CFD account, you will be able to see here. So there are certain terms. Unrealized P&L means that if you have uh, this uh, position, okay, that is still open, so any fluctuation will result, okay, in uh, profit or losses. So it will actually be reflected here. Okay. Next will be the equity balance. Okay, what does equity balance mean? Equity balance means your net worth in your C this CFD account. So say for example if you have an open position, okay, plus all the available cash. So it will actually make up your equity balance. So if you choose to liquidate all your open position, okay, and uh, if I add together your cash, that will equ equate to your equity balance. Okay. Initial margin, okay, what does initial margin mean? Initial margin, as you know, CFD actually require you to put up a margin when you trade, 
Okay, if you look at this particular order ticket, you see that uh, required margin is the same terms as initial margin. So in order for you to initiate to to short one share of Apple, okay, you actually need to put up hundred and thirteen sing dollar. So everything is converted in sing base. Okay, so this is the initial margin that's required, fifteen percent from the contract value, which is one share times six oh six point two by the price of Apple that you're going to short. Okay. Available cash, meaning that this is the excess cash that you can utilize to initiate more position, okay, or to uh, actually withdraw if you want. Okay, so this is something that is excess is in excess that you want to use it. Okay, margin utilization, meaning that how uh, how many percent that you have utilized in your margin. So are, are you almost uh, leverage? all your cash available in your portfolio. That will actually show the indication here. Okay, credit left basically is your credit limit. Okay, so every account holder by default when the account is first open will be given a 200,000 trading limit. Okay, so if you think that this is not enough, you can actually request to your TR to actually increase the credit limit for you. And usually this will take about four to five working days. Now. So if you need more limits, so you have to let your Reminds you of dealers know in advance. Okay, so this is a general uh, description of what does this every single terms actually mean. Okay, next I will actually go down further to this different tabs here. Okay, okay, uh, for this particular account, since it's a general testing account, so whatever amount you see is zero 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 here. So uh, I know that it will not be a very good illustration but this is the best I can show you. Okay, so account details. Uh, basically, it will show you, okay, if let's say if your account have different currency, it will actually display here different currency to you. So let's say, for example, if you have Sing dollar, you have Malaysia ringgit, you have US dollar, so it will actually show the ledger row by row uh, in its respective currency. Okay, so let's say, for example, ledger brought forth for the previous day is how much and uh, whether there's any adjustment. Adjustment could be due to dividend, okay. Uh, if you long, you will be paid for the dividend, okay. If you short, then you have to pay for the dividend, okay. So all these adjustments will be shown here. And commission, of course, let's say if you trade, uh, you will be charged commission. It will actually be shown up here on this particular column, okay. And realize P and L as well. Let's say if you have open position and you close it, you have some profit. You will actually be reflected here, okay? And this particular column, unrealized P and L, meaning that you have some position, okay? You have some profit, but you have yet to realize. So it will be be shown on this column. So move down to the next column will be the unrealized finance charge. So meaning that you already have open position, you have accrued finance charge. Okay, so it will be shown under unrealized finance charge as you go along. Okay, collateral doesn't really matter. Okay, equity balance, as I mentioned just now, which is uh, your net worth in CFD account and initial margin, the amount that you need to put up up front uh, in order to initiate a new position. Okay, and margin call, in the case of margin call, will be shown in this column as well, and excess funds for withdrawal will be shown in this column. And of course, uh, you can actually change uh, the date to a previous date, okay, to check your these account details at that as that particular point in time. So let's say if uh, you want to backtrack on the first of May, okay, what is your how's your account? How much money do you have in your account? You can actually change the date to that particular date, okay. That is for account details. And next, we will go to this uh, open position. Okay, this particular open position tab is actually live. Okay, meaning that uh, if you have a position and you liquidate a position, you will actually uh, immediately knock off the position. So you will, by clicking the refresh button, you will see the most updated position that you have in your account currently. Okay, so uh, assuming you have a DBS contract, so it will be shown here, okay? And the moment you liquidate, you refresh, and the position will be uh, liquidated. Close position, okay, you sometimes we want to know, okay, on this 
this particular month, okay, from 1st of May to uh, 22nd up till today, okay, how many positions have closed, okay, so I can actually do a search as well on here, on this particular tab, what we call closed position. So it actually display to you uh, what are the contract, okay, uh, when is the trade date, okay, what is the action, be it a buy or sell, okay, what is the quantity, and of course, is also uh, my realized PNL. That's the most important thing because you want to track how you actually perform uh, for your trades in in the month of May. Okay. So next we'll go to trades done. And also sometimes you might want to find out on this particular month how many trades have I done. Okay. So I can I can uh, filter again from first of May to up till today, how many trades have I done using CLD Trader 2 or using uh, this uh, Philip account. Okay, basically it will just show you uh, all the trades that you have done. Uh, what's the price, what's the quantity, with a buy or sell orders, it will be shown here. Okay, next will be the transaction history. Okay, transaction history basically is just like your monthly statement. Okay, it will actually help you to track uh, what will be your this uh, realized P&L, what will be your commission incurred, what will be your finance charge, uh, whether if you're holding long or short on the particular counters, uh, you're actually uh, paying or receiving dividends. So basically, transaction history uh, display to you all those information and you can actually sort your this transaction history month by month, okay? So you can actually look at what are the activities that you have done or what are the charges are, what are the profits that you have made for that particular month. Okay, so that is uh, under uh, account management. Okay, so pretty much, pretty much I've covered all. Okay, so probably I will just, uh, the remaining of time I will just open for questions. Okay, if you have any question for me, you can actually type in the the chat the chat group. Or maybe if any question for me, uh, anything that is still not sure about uh, how to maneuver this particular trading platform, you can let me know. Okay, I received a few questions here. Okay, there's an audience actually asking, uh, oh actually my colleague has already replied to you. Okay, that's my reply. I'm still open to more questions if you have. Okay, maybe I'll just share some of the audience question with you. Eh? Okay, this particular audience actually asked about uh, whether can the email alerts be sent to other email address that uh, I that he has with Poems. Yes, the answer is yes. So when you set up the alerts, right, you can actually indicate any um, email address that you can design it to. So let's say for example, uh, this email address need not be the email address that you registered with Poems. Okay, so if you have one more, or you have more than one email address, you don't want to, to, to assign to that particular email address, you can just key in anything you you are comfortable with. It will still be sent to that particular email address. So there is no restriction to this. Okay, there's also about, uh, an audience actually asked whether we have a GTC, good to cancel. Okay, currently we do not have, uh, we do have uh, this uh, GTD or what we call the good till dates. Okay, I will show you where is it. Okay, say for example,
Okay. For our GTD feature, our go to date, okay, uh, basically we have it on our Singapore markets only currently, okay, and it's only available to uh, in our for our advanced order types. So meaning that uh, on uh, this stop limit, okay, trailing stop limit, okay, then you can see duration under duration you'll be able to see day or GTD, okay. So uh, say for example, if I want to set a cut loss uh, for my part one particular position, okay, I can. Okay, so what I can do is let's say um, I want to do a sell stop limit on my this outstanding long position, okay. So I'll uh, under duration, and I don't want to keep doing it uh, every day, okay. So I can actually select an exp expiry time, okay. So the duration is actually uh, about three months or ninety days to be exact, okay, from the date where I submitted this trade, okay. So I can just go all the way to um, May, June, July, uh, July 20, 23rd or 22nd, okay. So I can just do a GTD, okay, over here, what we call good till date. Uh, then you can just submit the orders. But do note that uh, currently while GTD is only available under a share CFD for Singapore markets. Okay, even for uh, DMA, uh, we still do not have that features yet. Okay. But I'm sure we are going to have it very soon, uh, so not long from now. Okay, so this is how I just submitted a GTD orders. Okay, good till date. Okay, so as you can see, the duration is GTD instead of a day order. Okay, let me see any other question. Okay, if there is no more questions, uh, we will actually end this webinar. Okay, if let's say if you have any other question and you, want, you would like to contact me, okay. Uh, just a moment. You can actually go, to, go back to our website, okay. Uh, basically, it's the www.philipscfd.com, okay. The same place where you can actually uh, find uh, our this uh, installation file for the CFD Trader 2. Okay, so under here, the, the top right hand corner, there is this contact us. Okay, or maybe there's a shortcut here, you can call it 6336-4564. Or you can also do a live chat with us. Okay, we also have a, a live chat session if you have no time to call. Okay, so let me just launch the contact us tab. Okay, uh, yeah, basically you can just get the contact information here, okay? Just go to our website and um, anything, you can just give us a call, email us, okay? So uh, thank you very much for for being here today, okay, at ending our this webinar session today. So uh, thank you very much and have a great evening ahead. Thank you.